Hi, I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we're going to do a video overview of EBC motorcycle brake pads. I have in front of me on this table five different compounds, and that is a lot to navigate through when you're looking to replace the pads on your bike. What I'm going to do today is break down each one of these five compounds, talk about what they do well to help you choose your next set of brake pads. Let's first name them off. Organic, the V-pad, which is a blend between organic and double H. The very famous EBC double H pads, everybody's heard that name. The EPFA pads, and we'll close it up with the GPFA pads. Like I said, that is a lot to choose through, and each one of these pads does something completely different. Okay, let's start off with organic organic compounds, okay? So this isn't a sintered metal pad. This is an organic brake pad. Most of what we do here is sport bike riding, right? Racetrack stuff, high performance street stuff, sport touring, high performance street bikes, that kind of stuff. This pad would be a step down in performance from the stock brakes on most of, of those bikes that I just rattled off, most of those applications. Most bikes today are going to come with a double H rated brake pad front and back. Okay, so you go with an organic, you're gonna have less stopping power. What does this do well? It's very easy on brake rovers. Very easy because it's the softest of all these compounds. Let's say that you have some high polished rotors on some custom sport bike, right? And you're really worried about keeping those rotors looking good. Well, that's when you choose something like this because you're not, you're not out there pushing the limits of the bike, right? putting a ton of heat in the brakes, you've got a show piece and you want to keep it looking cool. If they have this option for the front and organic, this is going to help you keep those polished rotors looking nice, okay, especially some of the cruiser stuff, all right, organic's going to be great for that. Rear pads on a sport bike. You noticed I said this performs less efficiently than a double H pad. Let's say that you're riding on the track or even on the street and you'd like to use rear brake, but it's a little more drabby than you'd like, ah, that's where this would be cool to try. Put a set of the organics on the back if that application is available for your bike and reduce that grabbiness and that might get you the feel right that you're looking for and help enhance the ride so that's when you would try something like this on the back the v pad in between the double h and the organic once again yeah i don't know that this is really going to be the appropriate choice on the front if that's even available for most of our customers right because this would be a, a very street biased pad with a performance under a double H. Okay, They tried to blend the best of both worlds into this pad right here, but once again this could be an interesting option for a rear caliper on a sport bike. A little less grabby than a double H pad right in between the organic and the HH could be an interesting proposition on the back of the bike. Very, very street going pads here if you're putting them on the front if you want to try them on the racetrack either one in the rear to tune the feel of the brake you can do that double H pads this is essentially a stock replacement for most of our clientele the sport bike stuff the the high performance sport touring bikes okay double H pads will be what they come with from the factory those are appropriate for street riding for sure without a doubt aggressive street riding yes they'll get that done as Pretty much as good or a little bit better than your stock pads did. Also work out pretty good on the racetrack, right, in your novice group, okay, maybe very early intermediate if you're not looking for more performance from your braking system on your motorcycle. These bed in quickly. Many of them are made in the USA, which is interesting. The double H, the EPFA, and the GPFA, for the most part, by and large, are made in I, th I think it's Cleveland, Ohio, as a matter of fact. You don't find a lot of stuff made in the U.S. That's pretty badass. We definitely dig that. Um, let's talk shims real quick when you're replacing them. A lot of your stock pads are going to have a shim. If these pads come with a shim on them, install them. Okay. If these pads come like you see here with no shim, do not reuse your stock shim. EBC has engineered that into their pads. If they feel it needs a shim, they put it on there so it's complete when you get it not reuse your stock shims. So a quick recap here, this is going to be good for say, you know, street rider, direct stock replacement, maybe very early racetrack riding. Now here's where we get into the more higher performance stuff. The EPFA pad. 
This pad, once again, made in USA, it's got the label right there, okay? Uh, this is a centered brake pad. It's going to be appropriate for aggressive street riding, okay? You're looking for more out of your brakes than you're getting from your stock pads. That's when you start to look for something like this. And this one is going to be appropriate still to ride on the, race, uh, on the street and the racetrack. Even though it's kind of marketed as a, as a racing brake pad, it's still going to work out on the street and that's information I got too directly from the folks at EBC. Higher level of friction, higher level of friction than you get with your double H pads going to step up over your stock HH pads and give you more braking. Great for the street, great on the racetrack as well. I mean this is going to take you through novice, through intermediate and probably even into your, your advanced group until you really start to push the brakes and you feel like, God, I wish I had some more brakes. And that's when you would think about trying the next step. And this is their track only pad. This is their GPFA. They've had great results with this in racing. It performs at a higher level than the EPFA pad. So each time here, the HH, the EPFA, and the GPFA, you're stepping up performance. What you do lose here is they are with this one recommending that you don't ride on the street. Okay, if, if you want to do aggressive street riding, they'd really like to see you use the EPFA instead of the GPFA. And all three of those, like I said, were made in the US. I thought that was pretty badass. Let's talk about replacing the pads and bedding them in, because here's one of the most important things. I know you think, oh, I got brand new brakes, man. This is they're gonna perform better than the old ones, you know, and your instinct is hey, new is better, right? With brake pads, the first few stops, they will not perform as good as the brakes that you've just replaced because they need to bed in. How brakes work is really very simple. I've got a brand new rotor here for illustration purposes. You can see there's no friction material on it yet. I've got a used rotor here with friction material embedded into it. It is critical whether you're putting your pads onto a new or used rotor that you transfer friction material from those pads to that rotor. Because how the brakes work is the material that gets deposited on that rotor works with the material on the brake pads, okay? And that's where the friction comes from. And that is how they stop. You need to go out there and give each one of these things ample time to break in. And you'll really feel them start to come in stop after stop. Give yourself more room, longer stopping distance for the first few stops. Okay, when I say feel, I'm talking anywhere as little as five and as many as maybe 20. Depends on who you are, where you're riding, do you have new rotors? Honestly, new rotors take longer than new than old rotors do, in, in my opinion. Okay, so just be very cognizant of that when you replace the brakes more stopping room, put less demands on the brakes with every gradual stop. You're going to really feel these things starting to come in more and more and more. The more patient you are with that process, the better they're going to perform, the longer they're going to last, and the happier they're going to make you. Very, very critical when replacing pads. We have a video that shows you the nuts and the bolts of how to replace pads. You can look at that if you want, if you need some help to do that. Let's talk just a little bit now about rotor surface okay there's I've done it either way all right I've cleaned the rotors before I've replaced the pads and I've just basically put the new brake pads on I, I gotta be honest with you man I'm hot or cold as to whether I've really noticed a difference between cleaning the rotor or just putting the new brake pads on and, and bedding them in without actually cleaning the rotor if you were inclined to clean it a couple of things you can do one you can get some wet and dry 400 to 600 grit sandpaper, right? A little mild soap and some water, a little circular motion here. You don't have to do a lot, just very little. You're just trying to take a little, not trying to take metal off, just a little bit of that embedded friction material. You can do that, or you could use, say, like a, you know, like a, a steel wool pad or something, right? And just lightly just try and clean a little bit of that off, you know, maybe some brake cleaner or something, spray the rotor off, get the debris off, and then go out and go through your break-in procedure, okay? And, and that's really, that's up to you if you want to do that. I mean, some recommend that you do it, but the most important thing is the bed-in procedure. Take your time, give yourself room, and the God's truth is you're going to know when it's there because you're going to feel those brakes really start to bite 
with very little lever effort, especially as you start to get into these performance pads. Remember, the lever effort is going to be reduced with the EPFA over the HH and again with the GPFA because they have a higher coefficient of friction. The biggest caution I'll give you is if you're going new rotors, right, and new pads, really show these a lot of love when you first put them on. Go out, really take your time with that bedding procedure, and that way you're going to get your maximum performance benefit out of the rotor replacement. Replacing the rotors and the brakes at the same time is a hell of a performance upgrade, especially if you have a rotor that looks like this. This rotor's gotten really hot. It's got a lot of stuff transferred onto it. You know, this one's kind of, for me, getting to the end of the life cycle. I'll look to move it out and put a cool wave rotor on there like a Galfer or something. But when you put the rotors and the pads on, really take your time. I spent a lot of time talking about that braking procedure for a reason. Because I want to see you guys and girls get the most for every dollar you spend here. I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTracker.com. If you have any further questions on these pads, please leave the comment on the video. I'm the one who answers all the technical stuff on there. I'll be happy to answer your questions.